Okay, hello. Ah, oh, come on. Where is it? Nope, it's not that. It's this. There we go. Let us begin. How are y'all doing out there? Hello, Greg. Hello, Matt. Uh, and go. Okay. Uh, this is... Um, I should preface this by saying that this is a, a drawing of... It was a commission, and it's a drawing of some one-shot girl from Clarence, and she's wearing nice, fancy shoes. Um, yeah, and that's it. I had this loaded up on the USB drive. There's a bunch of other ones, but that's the one that just got... was on there before transferring it over. I keep most of my footage on a... How can I put this? I keep it on a... Uh, one of those little portable drives. And uh, actually, I keep most of it on a hard drive and use a kind of a toaster interface to use with my computers when I have it inside. Uh, but like I said, this one was on the USB stick, so I decided to just throw it on there. It turned out pretty good. I wanted to try something different with the, uh, with the perspective. I'm getting real tired of just having the same old... In the same old static, like, pose from a distance. So I'm really trying to play with that. And also getting used to the not very intuitive... Uh, just the weird... Yeah, the weird perspective tools that Paint Tool Say it has. They're... How can I put this? Clip Studio does a lot, a much better job at it. There are certain points where you can only like manipulate these, these in Paint Tool Say you can only manipulate them so much. In in Clip Studio, you've got a bunch of different anchors that you can manipulate at a time, and that helps either like change the change the vanishing point, change the Who's all hit me up? Device? Okay, well, someone just dropped something. Okay, it's mo mainly YouTube videos. Okay. Just got home from the corner store eating pretzel M&Ms now, now. Do they still make those? I saw those. I saw, like, snow pretzel M&Ms that they made one time. Hold on one second, I gotta go inside. Also, tell me if the, um, the music is a little bit too loud or not. I never watched Clarence. You know what? Aside from the uh, tumultuous production, um, it's actually a fairly good little animated series. Uh, oddly enough, Over the Garden Wall takes place in the same universe. Which is weird. That same co sort of, not same style, but like, well, I guess it could be. I don't know. There was, um... There's, you know, similar overlap between the teams that were producing it at the time. And uh, there was a picture someone did where they, they took a shot of the town at night in Over the Garden Wall. And they matched it up with a production still in Clarence. So, it, it like, it's day and night, but the buildings are all the same. Um, yeah, it was weird, isn't it? I know there was a home movies reference. Yeah, yeah, that was pretty good too. And this episode in particular, I hadn't watched this one uh, and the the commissioner. Um, like I was like, well, what is she? What what's the context of this? And it's like nothing. She just she's just kind of cutting loose, um, which was the context of the episode. And uh, I watched this particular one. And it was pretty good. 
let's see now. Uh, I've got my outside set up I want. Doctor 2? No. Monitor. Bugga bug, bugga. Uh, we see adult Brendan. Oh, beg pardon. I've got the other computer set up here. I'm going to do some things while I do this. Uh, I need this, and I need. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, what's that? Why is that? Okay, that's good. Okay. I never understood Uncle Grandpa. Uncle Grandpa grew on me. Uh, after it was like... After it was apparent that Uncle Grandpa was truly like sincere in taking care of the kids. Just in his own weird, wacky way. Um, But yeah, anyway, Clarence is definitely in the same universe as Over the Garden Wall. Maybe not the exact same universe. Maybe there's just some, like, weird, uh, I don't know, overlay in play. But still fun to consider. There we go. I just needed this. That's perfect. Okay, I'm going to open up this. My new computer, or my new setup for my new computer is wonderful. It's just, it's got, it went from four processors to eight processors. So now it's just, it's just rocketing along. I edited some footage this morning. And, uh, I mean, it was still a big improvement since I updated the hard drives and got a better processor from the original one, but, uh, <laughs> Boy, now it's like really booking. And that's because it's a new motherboard. What the hell would buy new computers. Oh, uh, Matt, so I downloaded Magic Poser on my iPad. I won't lie that it helped with poses, but the thing is it's monetized as hell. Get a pro free trial. Okay, even though I did, did, did. you know, uh, doll takes up a lot of space on the computer, at least like one gig, um, which is not a lot on a computer, but like if you were doing a little portable tablet sort of thing, it would be. Uh, but it seems to be doing pretty good. Uh, your cell phone in hand feels like a mix of it. No, that's good. Never saw the show, but Uncle Universe crossover is one of my favorite Steven Universe episodes. Yeah, and that was pretty good. And the little line about um, get it get it shined once a year, or get it cleaned once a year or twice a year. Uh, I think it's just called Doll or 3D Doll or something like that. So now we're going to be cooking. We are going to be cooking. Uh, ooh. Okay. I opened up a lot of extra stuff. Again, I'm using that old trick where you take a, take a square and divide it up. And then try to position where the characters might land. There was this neat uh, trick I saw. If you're not following... Oh, who are they? There's something brothers. They post a ton of tutorials. They they have a book. They have several books called Think How to Draw. Um, or Thinking How to Draw. And there was this neat trick that I learned where you you square out your your characters in like red and blue. 
to like you know like red is the chest blue is the the head and then the legs are another blue square or th another red square and then the torso is another blue square um and with that you can then use this trick of like moving like transforming the perspective line or trans uh putting the perspective line in in a trans in a perspective with transformation and it works great okay hey what's your opinion on adult cartoon art do you think they're doing some of the artist and making it in the don't nowadays wait do you think doing some in the past would make would stop an artist uh no i mean like there's been lots of weird drawings that have surfaced for about like you know Rebecca Sugar and like the director of My Little Pony did a bunch of like weird like um, uh, like Big Daddy Roth drawings that were really weird. Um, no, I, I mean unless it's like absolutely like not like not kosher. Like, yeah, then I guess it's okay. Like, I know people were upset that, that there's this one Simpsons artist that drew, like, uh, you know, Lisa as a teenager, and that's nothing. Yet. Knew that was gonna happen. Okay. So I just go through here and do this and do that. I just worry that my style might get the wrong attention. Ah. Also, the Astro Boy creator drew transformation art. Well, that's furry art. And yeah, you're talking about, um... Takashi? I don't know. He always wore an artist's beret. Okay, this is definitely the inkings. Okay, good. Good. Okay. I think I did this right. set up uh, oh yeah yeah well I mean Bruce Tim yeah he drew all sorts of stuff there's a comic called red which is about a bunch of uh, two pseudomasochist I guess hitmen and by hitmen I mean hit people one was a woman and one was a man And, uh, 
it shows like brutal lot uh, torture and SNM stuff and things like that so yeah and then of course his regular just drawings let's see uh... no no it's the comic it's just the comic I think it was called red I might be mistaken but I'm pretty sure that was just the title of it By the way, how's the sound? I had this weird thing when I was hearing my voice, but it wasn't coming through. It was coming through the speakers when I changed the output, and I didn't have anything going to the to the output from OBS. So I just assumed that it was going, it was feeding in from the actual uh, from some somewhere on the computer. So I just kind of turned it all back to where it was. There's no, like, reverb or extra voice. There we go. Perfect. Oh, this is so... I'm working on a new, uh... Working on a new drawing and I'm inking it, and oh man, it's so buttery smooth. Like the actual, um, like the actual pressure is way more responsive. Actually kind of goofing me up a little bit. Let's see, uh, who is the character you're drawing? Also, have you heard of Battle Cat on Netflix? I have heard of Battle Cat. I forget the actual name of this character. In the episode of Clarence, the boys, the trio, which is um, Clarence, Clarence, Tom Kenny, weirdo, bald kid, uh, and uh, the square-headed kid, um, they uh, they hit a ball into the yard of this, basically, a kid that's homeschool. Hello, Paladin. And, uh, oh, hey, Omelina. How you doing? Um... Yeah, well, that's the kind of mood I want to set about the night lounge thing. I just wanted to be really relaxed. So that way I can take a pause, think about what I'm saying, and then be able to, like, get back into it. Uh, She's homeschooled, and she's, like, really smart, but she's also, like, really sort of, um, like, uh, prudish? Not prudish, but um, very sort of, uh, and I wouldn't even say, what, what, sheltered, sheltered, maybe, uh, she's just, like, hyper-focused on learning in school, and then the kids come along, and they sort of, uh, turn her into a, um, uh, a, a kind of a degenerate, not, not, not hyper-degenerate, but, like, she takes, she, they go to arcade, and they take the ski balls, and she just gets up on the actual game, to get the tickets. A16. Hey, hey man, we're all just running in right now. not what I wanted to do. What did I do? What did I do wrong? Okay, this is fine. Okay. 
Yeah, this is much better. Okay. Although the issue is now that the tablet... There we go. Okay, that's better. Yeah, this is fine. As long as it doesn't... I need to put a counterweight in the back. So that way I absolutely make sure this doesn't fall forward and wreck my tablet. There we go. Okay, good. Sorry, I'm just taking care of something myself. Um, clearance episode where this girl sounds like the library girl from Recess. Is she the same one? I'm trying to think. Uh, square boy's name is Jeff, and the bald kid is named Sumo. That's right, Sumo, which is weird. Or at least that must be like a nickname or something. can get that. Getting invested in drawing to different styles. Oh, okay. I wanted to ask you if you know any martial arts like Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I'm learning Luthwain and it's like uh, with headbutts. No, I don't know any martial artists. I boxed a little bit in high school and maybe a little bit of wrestling. But other than that, no. And I don't even know if you would call boxing. Yeah, I guess you would. It's, it's you know. But I tend to actually think of martial arts as like actual techniques. Which there are in boxing, but you know. Not like any headstands or, or, or you know, like spinning kicks. The boxing character in every in every fighting game is always like American, isn't it? Or British, British. I always thought I forgot about uh, uh, Dandy. figure out how to make sure this doesn't shake. Okay, this is not... Oh, 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 I know. Maybe we can try this. Uh, I will get a... Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see if that works. Yeah, that works out pretty good. I just put a uh, piece of PVC t tubing between the two holes. And that keeps it from uh, wanting to jerk around. Wonder. Also. Oop. Oop. Okay. Wonder if I can also take two of these. That actually just hurts it. Or does it? Hmm. No, that doesn't help. I uh, love both Ashita no Joe and Amija no Ipo. Oh, Ipo! I know Ipo! Yeah, that's right. Ig, I hate the book style cardboard backing. What? Boxing seems like there's stamina management and distance. Yeah, kinda.
Oh, what's this? Oh, just a rock. Okay. Okay. I know what I need. Let's see. Where did I have those pieces? Let's see. I have some more of these. These pies right here. This will help. I'll figure out some way to keep this from shaking around. I don't know what you guys are talking about. You're talking about, like, all these animes and the dokens and stuff like that. I know about Dan. Dan Habiki? Oh, oh, change this one. The premise of, of the premise of Clarence is basically just he's a kid. I think he lives in Arizona, of all places. There we go. Which uh, they pretty much nailed it. It's not as deserty as people think it is. If you live, which means he lives next to a creek, which means he lives a little bit up north. I'm guessing, like, he definitely doesn't live in central Phoenix. Or Scottsdale, or Mesa. Shut down. Okay. That's good. That's good. Okay. Tucson? Um, I don't know. You know what? Let me look. Let's just try and, uh, let's investigate this, shall we? Let me bring up on my other computer. Let's see. Air, uh, oh, uh, let's just ask it. Where does Clarence take place? There we go. I'm sure, like, there's a note from a creator. Uh, okay. Aberdale. The fictional town of Aberdale. Located near Phoenix? Bullshit! There's no creek around here. There's mountains and a forest? Bullshit! It's pine trees. You're going to have to go up to pine or strawberry or uh, near Phoenix, my ass. There's plenty of pine trees, but it's up in, in like I said, strawberry or pine or... Um, let's see. Strawberry and pine are the two smallest towns. You're going to want to go up to... Uh, um, what's the, what was the big town? It was a small, oh, it was the biggest town around. They had a mall there, which was horribly understaffed, or, like, under-occupied the entire time that I, I would go up there. Prescott. Okay, yeah, I could see some, I could see maybe Prescott. Phoenix.
Phoenix is the smack dab in the middle, and it's flanked by Mesa, uh, which is in Glendale. Glendale is like the old school uh, towns. Um, my grandmother grew up in Glendale, and my mom grew, grew up in Glendale. Um, uh, Scottsdale is like you, you, the sort of uh, upper crust. There's a lot of... Um, and there's a lot of, like, shopping plazas around there. That's actually where my mom works now. Uh, a hairstylist. Um, and, uh, Mesa is... Mesa? I can't really tell what identity Mesa has. Phoenix is definitely inner city. It's town hall, it's... It's all your... It's... Uh, Phoenix is... I didn't know this, but I guess it's, like, now the... Seventh or not? It's either ninth or seventh. I forget which, which, but it's like the seventh or ninth biggest city in the United States, and that's not. I mean, shit. That's no small potatoes. That's why it's taking forever for us to get the count done. It's like for some reason people think that oh Arizona, it's you know cows and you know gets war cactuses and shit. It's like nope, nope. We've actually, like, developed a lot over the past, maybe, my lifetime, definitely. And that's about what? Like, almost 30 years of, of development? Like, I remember growing up and seeing, like, those shitty, uh, local, local, um, like, local, uh, shopping, um, supermarket ads done by your local, uh, you know, your local news anchors yucking it up. Um, we don't have that anymore because, like, that would be like, I don't know, Dan Rather. Like, hey, you guys, go to the, the Finnegan's on 49th Street. Phoenix is the fifth, wow, the fifth largest city. All right, that's cool. Isn't Phoenix pretty red uh, politically? Well, that's what I'm saying. With Phoenix now becoming the fifth largest city, we've we've learned leaned really towards the uh, the left. Um, in fact, uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. In Maricopa County, people have been like people who don't live here on Twitter are being like, oh man, as soon as the numbers come in for Maricopa, Carrie Lake's gonna be pushed over the top. It's like, asshole, do you live here? There's like a, a hippie taco shack, like just down the street from where I live. Um, no one is, this is, a, all of our representatives are all Democrats in the inner city. Like Greg Staten and uh, what's her face out there, and who's it? I don't know. Greg Staten's mine, um, but now you go out to like Sun City, where all the retirees are at. Um... Yeah, the big cities are always blue. It's like it's like um, Austin in Texas. They don't vote red. And then you got Pima, which I didn't know. I thought Pima was always leaning towards more uh, right than anything, but apparently those are the ones that they're all counting for when it comes to uh, the Democratic votes. And even Scottsdale. Uh, Scottsdale, I would, I would say, leaned really heavily towards red, but... Uh, not as much as you'd think. But yeah, like being the fifth... Again, I don't think it quite registers. I Even for me, I said we were the ninth or seventh because I heard that. I may have heard that like maybe about ten years ago. Now that it's the fifth largest city... You tend to want to vote for representatives to, I don't know, actually run crap. That's why we're so pissed off at Ducey. Like, no one likes Ducey. Ducey, like, threw up those, uh, 
those boxes in the middle of the desert and they fell over. And he was like, oh, wow, look at me, I'm a big tough guy. And then he sold our water rights away to like a foreign investor, I think like the, array, uh, the um, like, uh, not Iranians, someone, someone in the Middle East. But he sold our water rights away to us, to someone else. So now we gotta buy them back, eventually. The dumbass bankrupted um, Cold Stone Creamery. He couldn't sell ice cream in the desert, but he was supposed to like run a state. Oh, and by the way, I know why the Cold Stone Creamery went bankrupt. It's because every time you went in there and you gave a tip to the people, they had to like do this weird, stupid song. It's like, uh, making... Oh, my dad. He loved doing that shit. Asshole. Um, but it's like you turned having ice cream into like an awkward... A very awkward exchange. Thank you. Uh, the Saudi royal family. Our wheat board got sold by them. Yeah, it's weird. We... we oh, God. Uh, when I think of Arizona, I kind of think of Joe Apio. Joe Apio's done. He's he's toast. Uh, although, shit, that was not cool. Um, what he did, but he's still he's still he he lost all of his elections. He's tried to become the mayor of a small town and then tried to run for a senator, uh, but he couldn't get past the primaries. The so, so so they're just buying a bunch of crap from us, the the wheat board and and then water supplies. Uh, one point six million people leave in Phoenix. It was okay, so it really, I mean, it's almost doubled, but it's it hasn't really grown that much. Oh, and we're building so many apartments out here. People have been like, oh man, all the people are moving here. That's why they're building, like, the apartments. Well, half of the other half of the apartments are empty. Just like everyone else in the housing market. You know, they're all sitting on their, their, their investments. Uh, people are out on the streets. It's bullshit. You know, I'm glad that the Dems won, um, but at some point, it's more—it's realistic to like assume. I I always like equate them to like a bucket of water as compared to a, a bucket of kerosene. Like the bucket of care water, the bucket of kerosene isn't going to burn anything down. I mean, the the bucket of water isn't going to burn anything down like the bucket of kerosene. But at the same time, you can't like build up anything with it. It's just there for emergencies. I'm hoping... I'm hoping that the one thing they do is codify Roe. If they just get anything done. I hope they don't dangle that in front of us. For like... Like, uh, 2000... Uh, 2024. And I hope this doesn't... I hope the lawsuit for the student loan relief doesn't discourage any of those other kids. Way to go, uh, Generation Z. It was calculated that they all countered the the older votes, which means a bunch of teenagers in like Central Phoenix like completely negated all those old people in Sun City. I've seen a lot of like weird flags in Sun City whenever I go out there to like help my uncle. Or Surprise. He lives in Surprise. We go out to Sun City and we do, like, odd jobs from time to time. He is an old... He's retired now. Semi-retired. He was a drywall man. For a bunch of construction companies.
Um, I'm not really dreading the next federal election. Um, I think if we can prepare for it, I think as long as we, like... I mean, I, I was a rough one. Like, I was, like, literally sick in 2000. Uh, 2022. Or 2020. But, uh, this one I wasn't too bad. I was only slightly sick. I think as long as we never underestimate, like, the polls again and just really work hard. I just, it's, it's, don't consider it like, okay, one and done and it's, it's a done. It's like taking out the trash. You got to keep doing it. Or unless, you know, a bunch of crap builds up. But anyway, uh, Clarence, when it comes to that, other than, like, it's, it's definitely doesn't take place in Central Phoenix. It takes place, like, yeah, Prescott would probably be pretty good. A pretty good estimation. Um, because of all the pine trees. You don't have a lot of pine trees. You do in Central Phoenix, but they're all, um, they're next to mountains, and they get really dry, uh, in the summer. Which is why we have those forest fires. But you also don't have any, like, on Camelback Mountain and any stuff like that. And you also have them on people's property. There's, like, lots of, like, stretches where you'll find... You'll find them, but they're, again, they're, like, actually watered. There are, are parts where... Um, in Clarence, where they go, like, into the backwoods. Now that reminds me of, of Strawberry and Pine and... God, why can't I remember that last one? Uh... I mean, can Canada, our new leader is a crypto bro who... Oh, your new, oh, your new Tory leader. I was gonna say, isn't the other guy, isn't Blackface McGee or Brownface McGee still, uh, still the prime minister? But yeah, I don't know about Tories. Whenever someone, I know they're bad, but I mainly hear that whenever I, I'm, I listen to British uh, politics. Which, holy shit! You think America's bad? America can't get rid of their leaders fast enough. And Britain can't keep them, like, on the shelf long enough. I mean, good for them. I mean, it's good overturn. But, I mean, you need, still need someone to, like, write, put a signature on the checks. Am I right? Other than that, I mean, what was that last election in, like, Brazil? Good for them. Or, uh, get rid of that other schmuck. Or was that chili? That reminds me of that, uh, that old comic, like, Oh, you think socialism is good, huh? Why don't you go to a country that America has disabilized? Allegedly walked down on support of crypto when the other leadership mocked him for it. Yeah. Chile had constitutional... Okay, it was in Brazil. Who? Where does Joe Kerr live? I forget. My buddy. Uh, I think he's in Chile. sent him a bunch of paydays one year. Back when the mail was still working. Oh, by the way, why the I again, 
focusing on politics. Why the hell haven't we fired DeJoy yet? That son of a bitch. That really worried. I no wonder I was spooked. I like I said, oh, I wasn't I wasn't too afraid or as as nervous as I was in 2020. Well, that's because the damn post office was destroying all the mail sorting machines. Joe acts like this is his second term and just really starts laying into things. Oh, and I would love to never think about cinema ever again. Uh, they were so close to turning the book on him, but... Yeah. This is good. This is good. I'm finally, I'm going to broadcast my political affiliation during, uh, during my channel again. Anyway, let's see. Where are we at with her? I haven't, I haven't actually checked in. Oh, we're doing inking. This is pretty good. Where are we at in total? I wish there was a way for me to see. We are on the fifth file and there are okay the Clarence girl 6 is 20 minutes long and then Clarence girl 7 is 34 minutes long and then Clarence girl 8 is only three minutes long that was the final touches so we're we're about halfway this is big enough This setup's pretty good, but I miss my big comfy chair. Oh well. This way, I get to work double duty. <laughs> duty. Um, Clarence was fine. Um, there were points where like episodes that like I felt were really like really like great like really heartfelt and warm and then there were other ones that were just like weird well, what what happened with the the ball pit episode did like uh someone ate someone's fries like s someone ate Jeff's fries and then Jeff went insane and then you have that one part where Sumo uh, fell in love with, uh, or had sort of like his first animated crush with the cowgirl. The little cowgirl toy. Uh, one of whom is from my animal rights party. Oh, good. Like, Australia has issues with two-party system, but at least you can get stuff like Victoria's state government having the balance. But, oh, oof. Okay, I'm, uh, that's totally over my head. I know Bluey. I know Bluey and Crystal Quest and, um... Razorback? That that Australian horror movie about the, the killer boar? Hmm. Uh, 
I honestly been rewatching home movies. I find I like the squiggly version in season one. Squiggle something or other. Squiggle vision. Um, I don't remember a lot about home movies. I remember seeing it and being like, oh, cool, this is done by the same people that made, like, Science Court. I think Science Court was the only, the one I had, like, access to in my brain. And then, of course, you got Dr. Cass, which I sort of, like, kind of remembered a little bit, but not a whole lot. Basically, Labor, the leftist party, good, runs the state government. All right. Then made an agreement with the independent, a green, really left, and the animal rights guy. Okay. So basically, hey, want your government to pass bills? Add more lefty stuff in the bill. Oh, okay. That's pretty good. Is that how you got rid of all your guns? That would be nice. Oh, wow. Wow. That sounds amazing. Imagine a good Joe and a good cinema. Yeah, I know, I know. It's Australia. Sam Jones, Flash Gordon, and the little house in, and a little house on the prairie. What? House on the prairie. Oh, you know what else they did? Um, let's see. I'm trying to think. What was it called? It was for Nickelodeon. Actually, it was for like Nickelodeon's like teenage the side channel that they wanted to have. Um. It was O'Grady High. Remember O'Grady High? Where, like, something weird would just happen every, like, episode. Just, like, something weird. Just, like, I don't know what. Like, some part of the physical world would, like, shut off or, or change. Like, there was one episode where I think... They, you either grew older or you grew younger if you got sick. And there was another one where pain didn't work. And let's see, and, uh, yeah. But did they do anything else? Let's see, home movies. Uh, O'Grady. Um, this is in no particular order. Home movies, O'Grady, Science Court, uh, Dr. Katz. Anything else? I mean, I know that, uh, uh Benjamin, what's its face, went on to do, like, Archer and, and stuff like that. Oh, and Bob's Burgers, of course. Uh, let's see. Do I have any water out here? Yeah, I do. I need to get a soda. I need to go get to the store and get some more sodas after a while. Good stuff. Wasn't there one with a character in a wheelchair? Uh, was that Science Court? I got a 3D print Bloodhound printed 3D Marvel trade and an art print of Cassie Kane. Oh, good. I think Science Court had a character in a wheelchair and they, they were the sciencey type. Oh, 
Oh, uh, Pelswick? Um, did they? I don't think they did Pelswick, did they? Is it the same studio? When I'm thinking of them, I mean, they did, they had like, they didn't have a lot of action. Most of their shows were like really talky. And I remember Pelswick being fairly well animated for like a, like a early 2000s, late 90s. Uh, going back to Australia, I really want to see Razorback. Let's see, there was Razorback, there was, I know of another one, an Australian horror movie. It's one where, like, people take supplements and their bodies melt. And then, um, there was, uh, is Tire? The, the movie about a killer Tire? Is that an Australian movie? It may have been called Tire, or it may have been called Pavement and Blood. Rubber. Oh, okay. Rubber. Okay. I maybe it's just because I associated rubber with um, like Mad Max, like the the idea of like killings on a road. crazy about either version of Cat People, but the original is better. The remake is basically the 80s super horny, the Cat People. Huh. I've never seen, actually, I've seen the Cat People, like the original, um, uh, what is it called? Like the original, uh, RKO radio production. Like, I think it was the the, the, the the nerd who had the original, like, um, uh, Monster Movie Madness sort of review, and he did the cat people, where he talks about how the, like, the sudden jump scare about how the car comes into the frame. Hey, little frog. You got to watch Sleepwalkers this Halloween? Wait, do you mean you got to? Or you finally just... It just happened. I, I watched the tail end of Sleepwalkers. Like, spoilers. Um, well, actually, if... I don't know. I, I actually don't know if the book is any better or not. I just know it's weird. They're like monster cat people. But also cats hate them. Uh, like the only good bit in the 80s cat people is Malcolm McDowell acting like a cat person is funny. I think the guy is less of a jackass in this version. Huh. I, I, I never seen, I don't even know about it. I didn't know they made a remake of the cat people. <laughs> you 
and it sounds like they like really went into the, like the super campy or like the super like 80s version where it's just like ah oh, make a monster movie like um roger corman remade the wasp woman but and it was like for hbo or cinemax or something and uh just made it into like an actual giant like animatronic wasp It's like when the technology got cheaper, he just like made it super schlocky. Like I think his favorite movie of mine, like un unironically, a movie that I I saw multiple times and like finally got into, was uh, the Undead, where it's like time traveling and and it's in the reincarnation and all these just weird weird layers upon layers of odd sci-fi stuff like doesn't make a lick of sense or well like would really be really hard and insular to get into at the time it was written but uh having watched like you know all, a whole bunch of other sci-fi stuff. It's like, okay, I see what they're kind of going for. What's this now? Uh, the, the cat people, uh, Lisa managed to prevent the change. Uh, oh, we also watched 976 Evil. Brain Damaged. Okay, well, of course, Brain Damaged. Um, that's a pretty good one. Uh, that's a weird one. The Brain. And even Witch's Night Out! Woohoo! All right. Um, The Brain. I forget what The Brain was about. I know what The Brain is about. It's about a giant brain. But I forget about how it comes about. Yeah, Witch's Night Out is great. Um, um, what was I gonna say? Gilda Radner, a bunch of like, like Saturday Night Live people. Before, before they were all poached. Uh, you know, Second City people. Before they were poached by Lauren Michaels. Which, by the way, I got to see the new season of, uh, or the newest inter incarnation of, um, Kids in the Hall. You were right to drop out of high school. I was, um every sort of September to get myself hyped up for Halloween, I watch uh, Death Comes to Town. And uh, that show is interesting, but I wish it had more of, um, and actually I'm gonna say this if I ever do like a side eye review, I wish it had more uh, of like the weird Bruce Tim style we saw in the show and we saw in Brain Candy. With like the weird opening with the like the camera movements. And then the laboratory stuff. It's all well, it's a TV. It's a TV miniseries, and they probably didn't have a huge budget. And it's all shot pretty flat, but I wish they had done more of the stuff that like made it like really reminiscent of like the out there strange stuff. That Bruce was directing, like sausages and uh, 
Yeah, sausages in the darkness. We is shoveled coal. Hello, Fritz. Uh, have I watched the Rob Zombie Munsters? No, I haven't. Uh, freaking love Ginger Snaps. I saw Ginger Snaps on the Sci-Fi Channel once. Didn't uh, didn't horribly care for it. Didn't hate it. I just was kind of like I didn't engage with it, and it it didn't really engage with me. Sort of vibe. Again, didn't see that one. I have a DVD copy of Monster High, which is a movie that uh, 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 Lupus uh, reviewed. And boy, is that like worse than I thought. I, I guess I dodged a bullet with that. It's like totally nonsensical. I got it from Big Lots. Which I got Hawaiian from Big Lots. And I got a Christmas video, which I'm not going to tell right what it is now, but it looks like it might be pretty promising for a for a, a Christmas special thing to review. Craig of the Creek is still going, right? I would say, like, Craig of the Creek is, like, the, the proper... Like, I would say that's a hybrid of both of... of Kids Next Door in terms of, like, the just the insanity of, like, some of these characters and their ability... their quote-unquote abilities. Um, and, uh... Like, like Kids Next Door and definitely Clarence in terms of it's like, oh, a little slice of life of kids. Uh, they're gonna head out for dinner. Thanks for y'all seeing indulging me in a particular art genre. Okay, you're welcome, uh, Strugga. Strugga Bugga. And uh, see my work. Okay, uh, do you, where's your, um, where's your, do you have a link or something? Um, although I did see them this year, and wow. Oh yeah, them was insane. Like, I remember actually seeing, uh, that's like a master class in, like, show don't tell. Or like tell, don't show, in a weird way. Or like you know the 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 same technique that would be used. Um, uh, that would be used by uh, you know Spielberg, where you don't see what the monster is. Uh, and even towards the end, when you do know what what them are, uh, what they are. And they do it pretty well enough. I remember seeing that on AMC. Like, my uncle was, uh... My uncle was watching it with me. And I was like, well, what is this? And you just see, like, the... The, 
the adult and you see like the kid and they're screaming about them them something attacked this town and these are the only two survivors and they're just like shell shocked and uh i guess they like like replay a recording of, of what like a of, of sound that was like happening near the town and the little girl goes insane like absolutely loses her shit and I think the old man dies of a heart attack um, and this is before we even see what them are and I will not spoil it although if you were to look up a movie poster or even like you would know what 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 you know it they are Actually, let me take a look at that. I wonder if they were smart enough to, like, hide the fact about what them are. Stars a young... Oh, yeah, that's right, that's right. I was watching EMC, and the host was like... Letter Nimoy. Okay. Uh, no, I don't want that. I want them. Damn, autocomplete. Okay, them, 1954 film. Okay, and the movie poster is... Yeah, okay, you know what it is. You know what it is as soon as, uh... Yeah, okay, they weren't, they weren't, they were fine. That's, that's cool. They were, needed to be smart about it, I think. Unless, this is the original movie poster, or is this like a remake? them original movie poster no no it was always that okay it's always the thing that was on there so if you I guess I wasn't spoiled on it because I hadn't, I hadn't heard about the movie. Um, my uncle was just like, hey, watch this. And I was like, okay, well, what are them? So in my mind, I was, my mind was reeling. What could have been, it been? So when the big reveal comes. Like, maybe do yourself a favor. Look up, like, a YouTube. Uh, maybe see if it's on YouTube. Or something. Or, like, the, uh, one of the back of those like shitty sci-fi collections where it's just the title and they have no pictures on the back damn it Matt now everyone knows it's giant ants Well, it was still good. The effects were still pretty good. Hey, Tusu. How's it going? Them is on Hulu. All right. All right. with my Twitter. It's nothing been nothing but politics and now it's like video game gifts. I hope they I wonder if something happened with the algorithm. I wonder if he goofed it up and was just like nope nope nothing for nobody. Okay. Uh where it's done is a great job building the monster. Oh yeah, yeah it's fa still fantastic. I saw the new bath Black Panther. It was really good. Right on. Good. Uh, more modern version is John Carpenter's The Thing. Yeah, yeah. That was a good one, too. So surreal Namor is in the movie. Just assuming his film rights would be in limbo forever. 
Huh, well, I guess they got the entitle- the entirety of, uh... Oh, boo, what is this garbage? Oh, I'm- I'm seeing a picture of an AI artist selling their stuff at- at a convention. But it's all just anime girls. I don't want your garbage. Uh, at least the giant ant found a nice lady friend to play with on the poster. Yeah, yeah, she did. Oh, by the way, I hope this is an awkward ask, but how, do do you have a commission slots open? Uh, splurge for my birthday. Yeah, I'm gonna. I have one more to do. I have one, two, three. Yeah, I can open up another slot to get ready for um, get ready for the holidays and some also some other people that that could use. I've been I've been sort of slushing some funds around for other people who need it. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? I'm just going down the Twitter hole again. I want to see if anything's... Any updates to anything. I think my phone would be a lot better. I don't know why the desktop's acting so weird. Uh... Could AI replace human artists? I mean, maybe, eventually, but I don't think it would actually... Uh, no. No, not not for a while, not, not for a long time. First of all, just tell the AI to, like... I mean, it knows what a generic anime-looking girl is. But if you ask it to draw a specific character, it can't do it. Uh... It, it can't, like, or even just a thing, like a purple cow. It might, actually, no, I take that back. It could. The more generic it is, the more it can, like, facilitate what it wants. But if you're like, hey, Frank, uh, give me Frankie Foster. Um, I don't think it could do that because it, there's a, there's a... There's a language to design that I don't think it can quite crack. I think it can, like, say, okay, well, this is a pose, and I'm going to throw this on top of it, and this on top of it, and this on top of it. I mean, it could, but the more inputs that you have, the, the more inputs that you need to put into it in order to get the picture back, the more it's going to screw up. It can't figure out hands right now. It's fine, it's really fine for the people who don't give a crap about what they're intaking. If the, the, like, a lot of people that were really excited about, um... A lot of people that were really excited about AI were just people who wanted, like, generic, uh, waifus. Just like, oh, big-breasted, blonde, uh, barmaid... things. But you're not going to get, like, a Minerva Mink back. Or a Fifi Le Few. At that point, in order to actually generate an AI of a specific character, I think you'd have to do something where you build up the character in the first place. And in that case, you would actually need to have an artist put in what... Like, like, actually build a model. And then it would have to choose a random pose. And it would have to make sure that pose is, like, good and smooth enough. There's nothing weird about it. And then, like, produce an image over it. Um, which, again, like, the, the programs can't figure out fingers at this point.
like someone posted a, like a weird comic about like someone in the post apocalypse and uh one of the reasons why there was only one character featured within the whole comic is because the com the ai gets confused when it has to deal with multiple instances of people so no i don't think it's going to like go too far if you want just like a how am i how am i saying how am i uh, going about this it's like really it's the elevator music version of art and that you could just it's it it pops it out and then people who have a really low ceiling of appreciation like will buy it up Now, there's nothing wrong with using technology. I mean, I use it all the time. I probably wouldn't be able to do what I do. Or I would have had to work much, much harder. To uh, Or I would use a lot more... I would waste a lot more money on resources to do what I do. And it would be more time-consuming. And uh, But as a digital artist, uh, there are... There are leniencies and... Uh, things I can do like I can change I can I can manipulate colors digitally I don't need to like worry about what kind of paints I mix and stuff like that um, and I'm sure that there are some AI artists who are like well I really struggle on this uh, and they do with their prompts or whatever and then they just basically it's weird. I imagine what they do is that they put in a prompt and they hit a button and then they hit keep hitting that button until they get what they like. Or like tweaking a prompt until they get what they like. Uh, I There's been a time when I've tried to use like, um, like uh, that fake voice thing, speech to text or text to speech. And depending on how you write like s certain phrases... It really trips up the AI. So you've got to like actually, you know, craft your sentences properly. There's a big difference between a comma and a period and a ellipses. Um, and, and the result that you get. On the other hand, some of them are like really jackassy about it. Like, oh, this is just, well, you're going to be replaced. This is going to be our, you know, thing. Which also doesn't, doesn't like, it doesn't um, include the fact that, hey, you need to actually think about what you're drawing sometimes. Like if, I'm sure if Bugs Bunny didn't exist, an AI wouldn't be able to figure out, oh, what does a cartoon rabbit look like? It would probably like be just a rabbit. They wouldn't have the gloves and they wouldn't have the the carrot. Those are sort of shorthands for, you know, like the cartoon glove. That's shorthand for the whole entire history that cartoons have existed. For denoting, oh, this is a cartoon. This is cartoonish. And it's a certain type of cartoon. Uh, I once used text to speech program to pronounce enough as e no gan. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah, some of them are like really tricky. I didn't know this, but um, apparently the um, the April Fool's Day joke of uh, Chowder 
uh, was done with AI voice cloning, which means that they weren't done by the actual actors. Now, that being said, the, the guy who produced it said it was a huge pain in the ass to actually get it done. But it shows that I think voice cloning will be uh, uh, closer than any actual AI content. Like, you look at that weird animated short and you think, like, oh, wow, they got the original actors to come back and do it. But no, I guess he used AI. Now, the real kicker about the AI is, like you were saying, I, AI has to, uh, um, it has trouble with eyes, it has trouble with hands, and it has trouble with, like, well, it has trouble with everything. There's, like, this real uncanny valley-ness to a lot of those uh, images. And I was going to say, some of that art might be, it might be salvageable if an artist were to come in and fix it up. But at that point, it's just like, uh, you know, you're asking the artist to come in and, and actually be, you know, fix everything, use their artistic eye to fix what's, uh, what's wrong. There's an old saying or an old, an old admidge adage. An old like sort of like well it's an old story it's like a guy goes and he takes his car in and he's like i don't know what's going on with my engine and the 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 mechanic looks at it for like a little bit he looks at it for five minutes he says oh yeah i know what to do and he takes the he takes his screwdriver and he takes a hammer and he he hits something in the engine case and it fixes it immediately and he's like, okay, that'll be $50. And he says, $50 for what? You just hit it with the... You just hit it with the... Yeah, that's all you did. You hit it. What? Why should I pay you $50 for that? And it's, well, no, it's it's $5 for the hit and the 45 for all the time and experience, like recognizing what the problem is. And having the experience to solve it so fast. Which I totally agree with. Uh, import unnecessary information. Right. I don't know about AI writing. Although I assume, like, most of those, like, weird articles are, are written by AI. Like, the tru truth come out, Bruno Mars is gay. Or does Bruno's Mars is gay? Like, you, you think that might be written by someone whose first language isn't English? But that could totally just be written by an, a bot. Does Bruno Mars is gay? What's Bruno been up to? 
What was the last song he released? I honestly can't remember. I can't actually remember any Bruno Mars song. Did he do like Dynamite? Or was that someone else? And not Dynamite by that one that one pop band. Uh, hollow AI and novel AI are gear or great. He did Uptown Funk. Oh, okay, good. Good for him. Uh, okay, the pin is driving me nuts. What's the pin on Olaf? Um, here, I'll show you. Let's see, how far are we into this thing? Are we... Yeah, we're just getting about to the... I think, yeah. Yeah, we got about maybe 10 more minutes left. Oh, yeah, this is the girl. This was the references I was using. Um, yeah, it's Olaf, but it's based on... Here, let me let me bring that up. Uh, let me get the other keyboard. Uh, let's see. Chad. Okay. Olaf. This was based on a very specific uh, comic book image I found. And I forget what. It was part of my... Um, I have a history of comic books book in, uh, in my collection. And this was one of the indie comics. And here you go. And it was the side profile of uh, someone's brain. And obviously the brain was bigger and it had a bunch of different things inside of it. This one, it's just Olaf and his brain is an acorn and it only has one thought and that's the summer. And this was part of my uh, the video I made for the Olaf. I'm actually really proud of this one. It's other than maybe the like this, the... Um, the highlight, I would maybe smooth that out or have made that smoother. This was still back when I was working with um, vectors, so I didn't have a huge option for that stuff. The background turned out great, though. Anyway, let's get rid of it. Uh, still working with vectors, still working on my laptop, so damn, I couldn't have recorded if I wanted to. No, not the Olaf pin. Uh, underneath the Olaf pin. Oh, oh, that's my... Okay, sorry. That's this one. Here. Let's see. That's my original... Uh, that's my Geodude from... Uh, from a run of Pokemon that I lost. Because it was on the computer before it like went blue screen. Uh, and okay, do do it. I think I did an art cast of this one, didn't I? There we go. Yeah. This is my Geodude ad. She's got a, uh, she uses caution tape as like bows and, uh, she's got a damaged eye and she uses it as, uh, bandages and bows and stuff like that. Because of my, the Geodude I captured was female. I think maybe I've got a backup of the actual game. I should get it out and see if I can like do something with it. Anyway, remove, and there we go. If there's one thing I like about uh, Clarence, is that all the grass sort of looks like brown, like brownish. 
And uh, other than like really well manicured like lawns out here, yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. It's like the all the grass kind of just looks like brown from the winter. We don't have a lot of winter breeds. And it's not like brown brown, it's like a green brown. Or like a real yellow. Oh, no. No, what did I do? Oh, okay. There we go. Uh, let's see. We've got about maybe... How long? Uh, does Arizona have cold winter? Um, it's actually pretty temperate. Now it's pretty chilly. It's an unusual cold spell. Like we woke up this morning and it was 46 degrees, uh, around maybe six o'clock and then it warms up. Let's see. What is it now? What is it right now? Should have the temperature here. Uh, it is, let's see. 46 around 7 o'clock when I woke up. It's only 64. Wow. It was like 100 degrees like a month ago. Like it was still 100 at the start of October. It was smell horrible. Which is why I'm, I'm glad I was able to come out here and sort of just like talk as loud as I want now and also work on my stuff. Like work on multiple projects. If I had my druthers, I would put an office somewhere aware from that where it wouldn't bother any other relatives. So, like, I'm going to be like a reverse bear. Most of my activity will be during the winter. And then by the time, what, like, January, February, March, April, maybe May, I can maybe get, like, halfway through May, maybe up until June, and then it'll be three months of hibernation for me. Oh, well, there's a lot of, like, weird chill spells that are happening. Uh, let's see. Are we almost? We're, we're getting close. Let's see, at around maybe 5 o'clock, I do need to go and start making dinner. We're going to have pork loin tonight. And I've got a nice piece of pork loin uh, marinating in the refrigerator now with some A1 sauce. Which I heard is blasphemy, but uh, it's pretty good. And I also need to have something to tenderize for, to make it edible for Nanny.
even though pork loin is already just like an intensely uh uh just like tender meat oh and uh fried peppers as well sauteed actually not fried Let's see. Da, 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 da. Uh, what happened? He died of intestinal cancer. I didn't even know he was sick. Yeah, are we talking about uh, Conroy? Empanadas? Ooh, yeah, they are pretty good, aren't they? Um, not sautéed, fried. I don't even think you can sauté fruits. Let's see now. Da, da, da. Yeah, poor guy. Someone uh, rightly, rightly identified that he was always like pretty, pretty svelte looking gentleman with like a shallow face. But uh, apparently it, he just, it just came upon him faster than most. Shit. I was wondering why he wasn't, like, involved in, uh, like, I would really like to see his take on Batman from, uh, it makes sense that D. Baker was Batman in the, um, uh, uh, Poison Ivy series, because when, one, D. Baker is, is one, a good Batman from his, uh, his stint on Brave and the Bold, but two, he's also, like, a way more comedic actor. Um, although I, th and I think maybe they, at the time, they would want to keep their distance from, from like the poison ivy Batman and the, I guess at the, what would have been the, like the staple Batman. Um, but I think it would have been cool to see his like take on that kind of Batman, the one that's like a little goofier. Although we saw a little bit of that in, uh, what was that? That one short-lived Justice League cartoon? Justice League action or whatever? Um, yeah, like Deep Baker is definitely like, uh, is more comedic. Uh, but w there was that one, again, like I was saying, there's the one cartoon where Superman wants to play the bad cop. And, uh, and they, like, and then Batman had to be the good cop, so he's like, yeah, yeah, I, I said, uh, 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 D was, um, the voice of Batman in the Batman Brave and the Bold series, and that he played that character pretty straight, um, And there's the point where, like, Conroy is Batman. He's, like, trying to give Deadshot, like, coffee and a donut. He's like, why are you showing me your teeth? He's smiling. Batman's smiling. And people can't really process that. It would have been funnier if it was the Joker. Like, the one time Batman smiles at the Joker. And Joker's brain can't even comprehend it. He's like, ah, why are you showing me your teeth? Um, boo -doo 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 -doo. Batman does not eat nachos. Oh yeah, Patton Oswalt was Space Cabby, a character I was very unfamiliar with. I guess that was part of the Silver Age that kind of just dropped out for a while. 
You mean Roxy Rocket, the girl who orgasms when she is like rides a rocket? That was a weird inclusion. And I I think she only showed up like twice. Like once to tell Superman that Batman is missing. And then another time in an actual Batman story, but like it was like dumb because she rides a rocket. That reminds me of the Kim Possible villain Adrenaline. Adrenaline. Oh yeah, Adrenaline. That makes sense. That was an early villain. Let's see, I'm still playing Jack 3, or rather, Princess is still playing Jack 3. I'm trying to figure out what to either to play Spider-Man, the Miles Morales one, or download uh, Arkham, another one. Uh, hey, guy who breathes through a crab. What? Oh, really? She was supposed to be the main rival? Ugh, that's weird. Anyway, I could see, I was wondering why she never came back to, like, be a more, like, flushed-out antagonist. Oh, well. Anyway, here is the final uh, drawing in all of its glory. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I, yeah. Yeah, it's fine. I could have maybe gone a little bit, um, let's see. What are the references? I, I guess the, 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 the line weight is pretty co comparable to the original. I maybe should have gone a little bit deeper or made that a little thicker. I don't know. But, uh, I like the pose. And again, I don't know why the shoes, that was just something the commissioner wanted. Um, sometimes you get odd little notes and that's why you're able to work in fan art is because you can uh, maybe abide by those things and give people what they want as long as it's not a diaper I'm down for it uh, but anyway yeah I'm going to uh, ugh, I'm going to rest my voice a little bit and then uh, I guess, I don't know, maybe we'll have some more streaming tonight or something. Uh, hope it wasn't for less wholesome reasons. I made it not explicitly unwholesome. I think it's pretty neat. And she's actually a pretty neat character in her right. Uh, because she was, like, really adorable in the way that she, like, started to like, break the rules and everything. And her dad was also, like, really down. Um, at first, it's, it was like he was supposed to be, like, really strict and mean, but he was, like, really open to uh, her... Um, what was I going to say? Her her needs as, uh, as a child to have more loose-constructed uh, entertainment. But anyway, that's it for tonight. Yeah, I'm going to kind of rest my voice a little bit, work on the rest of this other stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I may see you guys tonight on the old, uh, you know, as I manage Princess Melanie. We'll see what that is all about. Anyway, um, yeah, check it out. Um, I think I start around 7, or that starts around 7. Who knows? In the meantime, just, uh, you know, smell you guys later. And, uh, yeah, thank you for joining me. We'll see you all in a bit. Bye-bye.